Hey, Brad Lancaster here, author of the books Rainwater Harvesting for Drylands and Beyond and the website harvestinggreenwater.com. So I'm in the outdoor shower that, from which we harvest the gray water that goes down the drains to freely irrigate food-bearing vegetation that feeds us, our chickens, our goats, shelters all of us, and creates beauty and all kinds of potential. So um, this is an awesome way that you can harvest your gray water Especially if, say, in your current house, all the plumbing is encased in concrete and inaccessible. Well, you can create an outdoor shower that makes all that gray water easily accessible and you can distribute it for free via gravity. Um, now, maybe you're not going to use it in winter, although we do. It's winter right now in Tucson. Warmer climate, though. Um, but uh, at minimum, you can use it in the hot months when it's absolute delight to use and the plants really need your shower drain water. All right, I'm gonna switch the camera view to a point of view. And I'm gonna show you more details. All right, so here we've got the outdoor shower in front of us. Um, you can see the spiral shape of the salvage corrugated tin uh, privacy screen and windbreak. And uh, we placed it um, on an elevated platform in the highest, driest part of the yard so we can gravity feed the gray water to all plantings around it. And uh, it is helping irrigate all these trees around it. So the velvet mesquite tree here, there's another velvet mesquite tree there. Um, there's a white thorn acacia, there's a um, desert ironwood tree, another desert ironwood tree. Um, here there is a white thorn acacia, I'm sorry, a cat claw acacia. Uh, another velvet mesquite. We've got many uh, multi-use edible understory plants like the desert hackberry. So uh, these are all watered by multiple free on-site waters. Uh, primarily the gray water from the shower, but also on the perimeter of our property, if you can look through the canopy of the vegetation, you can see the public street. Well, we are harvesting the runoff from the street into street side uh, stormwater harvesting basins via curb cuts. We cut the curb to allow the water into the basins, which are lower than the street. Uh, I'll link to other videos that show you more details on that. So that really helped all those perimeter plantings get established. Um, but uh, in the early years, when the root network of the plants wasn't as extensive, it didn't help with what was in the core, and thus the outdoor shower did that. Um, now that everything's established, the root zone of all these trees and the larger shrubs, um, the root zone extends to three times the diameter of the drip edge of the tree's canopy. So this tree's roots, they're, they're in these basins on the other side of the fence and the, that structure and within the outdoor shower basins as well. Um, so the key thing here is we are trying to set up a system where we are not using any potable drinking water, you know, virgin potable drinking water to irrigate our plants. Instead, we're using all free on-site wastewaters turned resource waters, like the gray water from the shower drains, the rainwater falling from the sky, the stormwater from the streets. This way, we're able to give back more water to the aquifer and the natural system than we take from it. Pretty cool. Okay, so uh, we'll now go on down and check out some more of the details. Oh, and I just almost forgot. And here's also a rainwater cistern. So um, we're able to collect some of the water off these roofs into the tank, and that's a backup source of irrigation in the dry times uh, for these plantings along with the gray water. Okay, let's go down and check out more details. Okay, let's walk up to the shower from the main house, which is lower than the part of the yard with the shower, which is right there, which is about three feet higher than where the house is located. So this is why this was the high dry part of the yard. Now um, we put the shower where um, it lures us past the things that need our attention, like our garden, which gets its water from the roof via the ferro cement rainwater harvesting tanks and then gravity sends the water to the garden which is planted within sunken water harvesting basins so the raised paths drain their water to the basins thereby increasing the available water to the garden and uh, then here we've got the outdoor shower and <laughs> you might see the goats checking us out uh, that's we purposely put everything integrated in this manner so that we go to the shower every day. We also go to the uh, bicycle area to get our bikes. It's our main modes of transport. 
Um, and uh, since we're going there, we can't help but check out the goats and give them some love and them giving us love and so forth. And we also have uh, chickens here. Now we um, planted uh, all around the chicken run uh, plants that shelter and feed both chickens, goats, and us. So the nopal cactus here, um, we cut up and cook the, uh, the pads. When the pads are young, we can eat them raw. Also eat the fruit. Uh, chickens and goats love it too. To get them started to like that, we, we cut it up into cubes and feed it to them. And then uh, once they acquire the taste, we can just give them a whole pad and they'll chow down. That's why we got it fenced off so they don't <laughs> eat the base of the plant and kill the plant. Um, also got the uh, wolf berry, native goji berry, which has got uh, edible um, fruit for us and fruit and leaves for the chickens and the goats. This is a little leaf sumac, okay? And uh, it's got seed um, that the chickens love. So I'm gonna toss some of the fruit down. Let me get a bigger seed cluster here. Yeah, so they love that. Um, so the, the seed just drops or I'll come out here and you know speed up the dropping of the, the fruit um, and chickens eat it up. So I don't have to buy that feed. I'm just growing it for free. And uh, then I'll just cut some of the uh, little leaf sumac growth that's starting to grow into the pathway here. And uh, pick that up. And we'll go feed that to the goats, which is right by the shower. And you're like, dude, why are you showing me all this stuff when I'm wanting to see the shower? Well, I think if you get a more integrated system like this, hey Lyric, got some sumac for you. I mean, this just makes so much more of your life convenient, easy, joyous, and connected. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you can see that both uh, Lyric and Panchito are loving the little leaf sumac, which we have also planted just on the other side of the fence of their pen. So. They're closer to it all the time. Okay, I'm gonna drop this for you guys and go to the shower. Okay. So, um, got also a bunch of vines. They're starting to grow up the shower too, and the cistern, all irrigated from the gray water from the uh, shower and the rain water from the cistern. So then, um, let's walk on in. We've, just before I do, wanna show you that it's a spiral shape of the privacy screen made out of corrugated salvaged uh, metal. We also salvage the telephone poles. Um, it's like urban forestry, if you will. Um, and then we've got uh, this um, old um, mesquite log that's uh, full of holes and it's amazing habitat for native solitary bees that don't sting. Okay, so we go on in. Don't need a door or a curtain on the uh, shower because the spiral like shape gives you the privacy. There's the shower head. And then here we've got uh, multiple drains. And uh, the reason we've got multiple drains is uh, we direct the gray water um, from each individual drain to a separate branch drain network of pipe. So we are distributing um, half of the gray water from the shower in that direction and out to plantings on the other side of the privacy screen there. And this one sends it the opposite direction. So we keep the soil that receives the gray water aerobic, meaning full of oxygen, and thus it doesn't get stinky because the water is able to quickly infiltrate into the root zone of the plants to be beneficially used. Instead of puddling, in which case it would be anaerobic, lacking oxygen, and it, it would stink. So this is a really good system. And I'll show you the other side of the system in just a moment. Um, and then you can see there, we've got the uh, little chicken window from which the chickens can hang out and see us and we can see them. So um, we designed this little chicken window in the outdoor shower. So we can see the chickens from within the shower, they can see us uh, and also, uh, having that space there has more airflow, so it's cooler in summer, and we um, can grow uh, plants like the uh, chuparosa up through that.
So the outdoor shower's back there. Um, someone's in there showering right now. And uh, we have the pipes. Um, here's one of the branch drain systems. It comes out here and then it branches with a flow splitter. Okay, so half the flow goes that way and half the flow goes this way. Then we have another flow splitter here. So half the flow coming here drops out there and then the other half comes here. Now the key thing with these gravity fed systems is you have to maintain a minimum 2% slope on the pipe. Okay, so that way everything keeps moving. You don't have stuff settling out and clogging. And uh, the cool thing here is we're now in the chicken run, um, in the mulch basins, receiving the gray water. And I don't know if you can see, here's the pipe here. And back there, there is another pipe that um, is outletting gray water. That's from the other drain, okay? A whole nother branch drain system. Now, uh, the cool thing is the chickens, they hang out here. Um, we do fence off the smaller plantings so the chickens won't eat into the ground, but as the plants grow through the fencing, the chickens can eat, okay? Um, and all is irrigated for free from the gray water. The other super nice thing is we found this to be a fantastic way to cool the chickens in our extremely hot summers where we have high temperatures over 115 degrees some days. So the chickens will just hang out here in this wonderful shade um, provided by all the plants that are uh, receiving free gray water irrigation. So they'll hang out in the shady cool spot, which is even cooler because the soil is moist from the gray water. So um, we don't have to miss the chickens or do anything like that. Uh, they are just taking advantage of the evaporative cooling of the soil that's already moist from this free gravity fed um, gray water harvesting system from the shower. Pretty sweet. And here, you got a chilty peen with all kinds of uh, chilty peens on there right now. And the sweet thing is, um, got wild birds coming in that harvest some of those as well. And they help distribute uh, the seed. So we get more chilty peens growing around, as do the chickens. Awesome. So here, um, I'm now, okay, so here I'm now on the other side of the shower. That's the entrance. So um, we have another branch drain. I've got a little access gate here. Just opened it to get the camera in. So there's the pipe coming out. This one just splits twice. So half the water flow goes outlets right there and the other half there. And the sweet thing is these pipes are well above the soil level and the mulch level. So there's no chance of clogging. Water can freely drop out and um, irrigate the root zone of all these plants around here. Doing a close-up here of um, the branch drain um, pipe network that comes out from the outdoor shower. This is an essential item in a branch drain system. It's uh, We make a hole with a little clean out. You can use a screw-in PVC plug um, or what I'll oftentimes use is a tapered um, cork plug. Nice thing about the cork is you don't use any plastic. Um, for the plug anyway. So what's essential here, especially with a shower when you got people with long hair in the family, is uh, um, you sometimes get hair clogging the point at which the flow is split. So I can just reach my finger in here and I've recently cleaned this so we're all good. There's no goop. Uh, but oftentimes, uh, there's a little bit. There we go, there's the hair. So, um, can get that out just drop it out and it'll biodegrade in the in the mulch basin if you don't want to use your finger you can use a piece of hooked wire um, but it's essential to make uh, maintenance really easy uh, convenient and joyous so you do it <laughs> all right for more information on these simple gray water harvesting systems like the outdoor showers branch drain gray water systems um, multi-drain pipe systems for washing machines, and more. Uh, be sure to check out my books, Rainwater Harvesting for Drylands and Beyond, which you can get at deep discount direct from me at my website, harvestingrainwater.com. And I've also got a bunch more info on gray water harvesting and the harvest of many other free on-site waters on my website, harvestingrainwater.com. So please check it out. 
And uh, there and especially within the books, you'll get detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how to assess your site and determine which gray water systems and other rainwater harvesting and water harvesting systems are best for you, um, how to size them appropriately, and, uh, and then implement them step-by-step, -step, especially if you use my volume two book. Okay, all right. Uh, well, thanks so much for watching. Hey, one other thing. Also be sure to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, just search Brad Lancaster on YouTube. You'll find it. <laughs> okay, here's the um, passive solar batch style heat water heater that uh, is the source, the sole source of the hot water for our outdoor shower and households. Um, and we made it out of uh, just old gas uh, hot water heaters where we stripped off the insulation and the metal that covered the insulation we folded up to create a cradle to hold it and then made a insulated box out of one inch thick uh, fiberglass um, wire uh, foil sided um, insulation board um, heat taped together for uh, two inches of insulation and uh, then salvaged glass um, double glazed glass and uh, yeah this has been working great for God, over 26 years. And then a little uh, solar hot water heater, sorry, a little solar oven we made out of uh, salvage materials.